Hey, what's up guys? Sir Amanon here and welcome to another video. So this is going to be the return of Road to 1000 Dueling Book Rating. Uh, been quite a while since I've hard committed to the series, but to be fair, since quarantine started basically, uh, I haven't really been seriously invested into the game since there haven't been any you know high tier events. But with the return of potentially said real life events, uh, I want to be getting back into the swing of things, kind of brushing off the rust a bit here. Um, and hopefully catching my misplays as I watch through my own replays. So that's kind of one of the benefits of having this series is that I get to um, kind of share with you guys my sort of experiences and the things that I could be improving on and things of that nature. So now we're going to be obviously playing the Tribigate Lurialisk deck. Shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody who's been watching my uploads for the past few weeks here. And then our opponent is going to be on Chadal and Vote, uh, which is a pretty exciting matchup here. So let's get started without any further ado. Uh, we do win the RPS, and we're going to be choosing go first. Obviously, that is very advantageous for us. Uh, but our opening hand going first is going to be Turquoise Warbler, Forbidden Droplet, Barrel Canary, Celestine Wagtail, and Ash Blossom. So, solid hand for going first, for sure. Uh, one thing to note is that I change my deck lists quite often, and even though there's nothing new in this hand specifically, um, I'm pretty sure by now I already made changes to the list, and I'm also fairly certain that this list right here is not the same as my current list. Um, but if you want to see the deck profile that I uploaded a, about a week ago, uh, you can go ahead and check that out. It'll be in the uh, top right corner of the screen. But uh, yeah, this hand obviously super solid. And then their hand going second is going to be Squamata, Droll, another Squamata, Hedgehog, and a or Alistair. So this hand is very Shadal heavy, which kind of uh, gives us an intel on their build. I didn't know about this uh, at this point in time. But yeah, they have a hand trap, which is one of the best ones against our deck, plus a lot of the engine cards as well. So we're going to begin with a Turquoise Warbler, of course, and then we're going to use that effect to summon out the Wagtail. And then Wagtail is going to grab us a Bird Call on which summon or on which effect they're going to just go ahead and drill us. So that is pretty bad, of course. Uh, it pretty much cuts off the access to the entirety of our play. And that's why like opening Cobalt Sparrow tends to be better in this case, because you can do you know some Tribigate plays since typically you're searching Nerval, uh, whereas here you get kind of stuck when you get drilled. Um, so what we're going to end up doing is that we're just going to sit on uh, Ensemble Robin and then we're going to go ahead and pass. Uh, I could have technically done a play where I like went for Assembled actually and then just detached to get something engraved to go for Barrel Canary and then go into Robin afterwards, which would have made us that my Robin would have been protected from the battle phase. But here I don't mind too much if the Robin gets uh, outed here. Obviously it's pretty small right now, it's only a thousand attack, so a lot of reasonable normal summons can just beat over this. Um, but the main point is that it gets recovery back for Turquoise Boy Boy, which starts the engine again. And then I have ideally Ash plus Droplet to stop my opponent. So uh, if we get value off of the bounces here, that's kind of just a bonus. But I didn't want to relinquish the Barrier Canary follow up, uh, so I decided to just keep it in hand. A wee pass, they draw a copy of Foolish Burial, which is quite nice. Uh, they're going to immediately activate it here. And then they're going to send to the graveyard a copy of the Neshadal Genius, which is one of the newer Shadals. Um, so this one, when sent to the graveyard, allows you to basically turn off an effect monster on the field. Um, so they're going to go ahead and target my Robin, so I can't activate her effect anyways. So um, it wouldn't have mattered, actually, if I did the earlier play with the Assembled Nightingale, um, because this just wouldn't have gotten value regardless. Um, still would have been, a, or been able to keep it on the field, which is decent, but... I wasn't really too concerned about that, but that's something that you might want to consider uh, if you really value keeping this around. Uh, they're going to go ahead and normal summon Alistair, and then here I chain Ash Blossom. Uh, probably I should have used Droplet instead uh, and gotten rid of Bird Call, because when I get Warbler back, I can just simply bring back the Wagtail from Grave anyways and get Bird Call there. And by using Ash here, I play into things like Triple Tactics Talent. Uh, I see Shadal, so now I have to worry about Shadal Fusion, because I don't think the you know small Shadal package uh, plays this card. Uh, and then even like Nadir's Servant if that's around. So yeah, probably should have just committed Droplet instead. Uh, but yeah, they're going to go ahead and go to Battle Phase. They're going to crash with our Robin, and then we're going to add back the Warbler. So yeah, we have our engine anyways, which is quite nice, and they have no more additional interruptions. So we get to freely pop off right here. So we're going to activate Burr Call. We're going to add a copy of Cobalt Sparrow. They don't have another copy of Joel, so we get to just kind of um, fully commit... Even if they did have Joel, it would have been fine because we would have gone for a Zeus play, which is decent. Uh, so yeah, we're going to go for Cobalt Sparrow into Nerval. We're going to overlay for Recital. Uh, we're going to activate Recital for the Sapphire. We're going to activate Sapphire's effect. We're going to bring out itself and Nerval, and then overlay for Recital number two. Uh, we're going to search Crow in case the game goes late for whatever reason, and then we're going to pick up a copy of Kit from the Nerval. 
And then here we're going to go and overlay for the Utopic Draco Future, followed it up with a kit, and then we're going to activate the effect that's going to you know, banish two for Harpy Conductor. We're going to go for the similar link, and then we're going to dump Rendezvous off kit. And then finally, Barrel Canary to bring back the Sapphire and then make a big ol' Assemble Nightingale. So once everything's said and done between the Sapphire and the Wagtail, uh, we have a 1,000 attack point Nightingale due to Barrel being underneath it that can attack four times. So this is going to be game right here. So yeah, I think pretty straightforward game overall. Um, just kind of shows that even if you get drilled, as long as you have enough defensive cards, uh, plus ways to just stabilize your engine, uh, you should be in a good enough position to recover and then go for game next turn, or at least go for a push. So even though the hand was fairly weak, um, we were in a decent spot. Um, it was potentially worth going for the assemble play, so that's something to keep in mind for the future uh, that might be worth doing in that specific hand. But in game number two, they're going to decide to go first, and their opening hand is going to be Wendy, Dragon, Meltdown, Beast, and Invocation. So again, they have the Alistair Access plus a lot of Shadal names. Uh, these names seem quite good here, and they have the Hard Drawn Inv Invocation, of course, so quite solid. And then our hand going second is going to be Ash, Wagtail, Warbler, Bird Call, and Keras. So a lot of similar engine cards to game number one here. We have the Ash going second, um, and we're just going to have to see what kind of board they end up on. So they're going to begin with a copy of Meltdown, and then they're going to pick up an, or pick up an Alistair off of this, and then they're going to normal summon it. Uh, I drop Ash Blossom here, but obviously they're going to have the Hard Drawn Invocation anyways. It's standard invoked stuff. Um, I probably, again, should just be holding this for, like, Nadir's Servant, uh, just because really what I am, what I should be more concerned about is Winda rather than just Makaba. Uh, so that's something to kind of keep in mind. Like, I should probably just be holding the Ash in this kind of, in this matchup. Uh, but yeah, they're going to actually hard fuse uh, into the Aklone here, so it didn't matter uh, because they have access to Winda regardless. Um, so yeah, they're going to go ahead and activate all their effects. So they're going to go and set Hedgehog off the Wendy, they're going to Beast uh, and then draw into Ariel. And then they're going to Gravity Controller. Here's maybe a point where I could have asked, like, was the Aklon once they go for Gravity Controller? Um, so that would have cut off their uh, access to uh, access to Schism. But if I let the Alistair resolve, they would have had two invocations anyways. So they could have had, like, Makaba plus all the setup. So, yeah, I think that it was it wouldn't have made a difference. Like, Windup was going to be on the field anyways, just given the composition of their hand. So they get Schism, they're going to Pitch Dragon, they're going to set it and pass. Uh, we draw a copy of Fractal for turn. Uh, so basically we have to try and beat Winda with just engine cards. And it actually is possible with this hand um, because Bear Call is a broken card you're about, you're about to see. Um, so we're going to go ahead and activate Fractal Effect. We're going to go and dump a kit and then dump Nerval. Um, and we're going to pick up another copy of Fractal. So here I'm only concerned about like the hand trap. I obviously know we're going to have to deal with a Winda this turn. But... Uh, realistically, if they have like a hand trap on top of this, then we might be in trouble. Uh, but I do have a plan for outing this uh, schism right here. So we have three tri beasts in grave, and our goal is to try and get four so we can go for a shrag. And so I'm actually going to activate Burr Call, and we're going to foolish uh, burial because this gets the extra name in grave, so we can uh, pretty much make it so that the schism doesn't get value. Uh, so uh, the end goal, he, they actually flip up a schism in response, but basically. Um, if we normal summon Fractal and banish 4, uh, if they flip up Schism, we can just try banish the Winda. If they don't, and they try to chain the Schism, or if, if they chain the Schism to the Shurag, uh, then we just banish the Winda anyways. And then if they don't, then we just banish the Schism. So basically, this is just going to out the uh, the Winda uh, in every case scenario. But they're going to go for it here because they don't want us to get value off their Bird Call special from hand, uh, which is reasonable. So obviously, upon seeing this, we're just not going to do it. Uh, we're going to send Warbler since it's just going to get banished anyway. And then we're going to go and banish 4 off the Fractal. And then we're going to go for Shrike. And then that's going to go and banish the Winda. I thought about just banishing either Schism or Hedgehog and just attacking over Winda and going for main phase 2 uh, plays. But I do decide that I want to try and go for game if I can. Um, because I don't want to have to compete with like you know just more of the grind stuff. Granted, like I do have the Barrier Statue, which is fine. Um, but they also have... Um, or actually no they don't have oh yeah they have Alistair coming back right because they banished it from field so they're going to invocation and add back their Alistair and then uh, this is actually decent uh, because they can go for Raijin which plays pretty well into the barrier statue and I also side out Rendezvous going second um, so that's no another thing to keep in mind is that that wouldn't have survived the battle phase and they could have kept playing in main phase too so I want to end the game as quickly as I could 
So we're going to go for Fairy Jet right here, and then we're going to go and trigger the Omen. That's going to grab ourselves a copy of a Cobalt Sparrow. Then we're going to activate Fairy Jet. We're going to summon out the Warbler from hand, and then we're going to go for the Cobalt Sparrow. And then Sparrow is going to search us a Nerval. Uh, Wagtail doesn't give us too much value since we already went through Bird Call this turn. Uh, we're going to overlay for Recital, and then we're going to go for Sapphire Swell. I'm not boosting anything on my opponent's field right now. Uh, just not really too big of a point to doing so. Um, although, I could actually go for the big LTK since Gravity Control is a thousand attack. Um, so I could have gone like... Well, actually no, I, I went through the, um, the Bird Call already, didn't I? Uh, let's think about this. I guess I could have gone uh, Sapphire plus Wagtail into Recital number two and then search Barrow Canary. And then I could have gone for Barrow Canary to bring back, uh, and then that would have been an Assemble Nightingale. So yeah, perhaps like, it was possible to do it, but uh, I wanted to like set up more interruptions just in case. Uh, plus I was trying to be mindful of the card in their hand. So we're gonna summon Nerval here, and then we're gonna activate the effect to summon out DDL. And then we're gonna go for Recital number two. We're gonna go ahead and add ourselves Barrow Canary. And then we're going to overlay for the Toby Draco future. We may use Nerval uh, at the start, so can't use it here. But we're going to DDL to send away our Ferrogip. And then we're going to bounce the Gravity Controller since it, uh, we can't <laughs> out it otherwise. And then we get a Ferrogip effect. We're going to draw into Wagtail and put one back. And then we're going to Keras effect. We're going to pitch the Wagtail, summon itself. And then we're going to banish three for the Simorg, uh, just as extra insurance. And then we can finally Barrow Canary and then pick a follow up here. Uh, for, from the uh, Wagtail, and then go for the Robin. So we can go to Battle Phase, we know this is Hedgehog, and we're just going to go ahead and let this resolve, because uh, this just be game anyways, um, so that's fine. Uh, it's okay if they have Shadal Fusion, because uh, even so, Shadal Fusion is a bit more awkward under Barrier Stature, and we have the DDL here now to protect it from, say, something like a uh, Invoked Raijin, which is decent. So yeah, we feel pretty good here, we can attack for 3k, plus 24, plus 1200, and finally, 1600, which will be game right here. Um, so yeah, they took 1100 instead of 16 from the Ancient Warriors link, but uh, that will be the end of the game. So yeah, that's going to be a victory for us here. Um, I will be uploading some matches that I do lose because uh, I think that's important to show off as well. But yeah, I think this is pretty solid. Uh, we got Drolled, which uh, Droll is one of the hand traps you have to definitely uh, think about when playing this deck because this deck does a ton of searching. Um, and then in game two, uh, we can actually outwind a, if we open the right engine cards. We don't need to rely on cards like Droplet or Imperm, which is great. Um, so I think that shows just how broken of a card Bird Call is. Like using Foolish Burial just to get an extra name engrave for a Tri Brigade is like pretty insane. Um, as well as it helps play around Droll as well. So that's just quite good. Um, so yeah, that's, I guess that's something I talked about as well for the game one play. I guess I could have like Bird Call sent something. And then Barrow Canaried, uh, which would have been decent. So we wouldn't have to waste Assemble, but I would have to use both my follow-up cards, which uh, doesn't seem the greatest. But that is something you can do uh, if you get drilled as well. So yeah, this is, I think, overall a pretty decent showcase uh, of the deck. And there's a lot more to come. Uh, I still am <laughs> discovering new things with this deck every single time I play it. Um, so I think that's, a, uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, I really do enjoy this deck quite a lot. But yeah, that's going to be it for the video, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe if you did enjoy. And I will catch you in the next video. Uh, see you guys.